The following is a Rack Radio Show.com exclusive. And welcome back to the Rack right here on WildTalkRadio.com. Brought to you by our friends over at Wrestling Figure Wednesdays. Go to YouTube.com slash MBG1211 for all your stop motion wrestling action figure needs. And joining us right now is the man who's behind all the amazing artwork that we see all over WWEshop.com. Please welcome back to the rack, Rob Schomberger. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. We're happy to have you back because, you know, about a year ago this time, I think, we actually spoke to you and you were getting ready to head down to New Orleans for WrestleMania 30 to take part in uh, WWE Access. You know, how, how memorable was that experience for you? It was, it was life-changing. Uh, no other way to describe it. Uh, it was oh, a ton of hard work. Uh, <laughs> like Each day was like 20 hours. Um, oh, wow. It was more like napping than sleeping. Um, but uh, it was definitely... Uh, I, there's my life before WrestleMania 30 and my life after. And they're two very different things. And I'm really excited to, to see what happens this year. I was going to say, you painted this huge piece live every day didn't you that celebrated the 30 years of wrestlemania that was commissioned by wwe didn't you yes and by the way it was amazing and i'm kind of with everybody else i know you can't sell prints of it but i wish you could because it's a spectacular piece (laughs) but where in corporate did that end up i'm really curious to know i think it's on the second floor they told me i haven't been there to see it yet uh but they uh ended up making like a whole uh, like hallway that celebrates uh, WrestleMania, and that's the the centerpiece of it. Uh, no pressure, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's going to be the centerpiece. You know, no worries, <laughs> it'll be fine. So I also did uh, six other paintings for them that was used in the um, in the uh, memorabilia section of uh, access and those paintings are last I heard hanging up in the talent relations department the each one were like the six biggest stars in the history of of WWE so it's there to kind of remind the talent relations staff of of what they're working towards again no pressure (laughs) yeah well that's a that's a pretty cool feeling to have so much of your artwork in in WWE headquarters and have it admired by so many people there. You know, Triple H walks by, yeah. you know, every day. He's, sees your uh, stuff. he's actually got one of my paintings in his office of a uh, killer Kowalski. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were there in person last year and we have the, we call it the thing. Because I don't like to talk to it about it because I'm a big Undertaker fan. But what was it like for you when oh. the streak was broken? Um, I uh, had a very unique vantage point for the show uh, because I hand painted the jacket that Ultimate Warrior wore the next night on Raw. Um, oh, yeah. I got to actually watch the show from his private box. Oh wow! And um, my my wife and I, and then. Uh, several of his, like his agent and several personal friends didn't actually get to, to hang out with him there. Uh, he was very busy backstage, but, um, you know, we're, we're up there watching and, you know, just being able to see the whole crowd, you know, those, whatever it was, 75,000 people that were there, uh, be, having that kind of vantage point to see that was awesome. Or, you know, like when everyone started doing the yes chance, seeing all those people at the same time do that. It was almost something like from a zombie movie, you know, like <laughs> 75,000 people doing the same motion at the same time. But anyway, um, you know, it was an Undertaker match, so I was definitely into it, but also kind of like in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, it's a WrestleMania match. He's going to win. Right. Uh, so I was turned and talking to, to Warrior's agent, who's a, a friend, and uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, like, it happened, right? And we're like, wait, what just you know, like what just happened and like everyone was just kind of like stunned. And then the graphic went up at the 21 and one and like, I, I describe it to people and they think it's like hyperbole or something, but it's the truth is that there was a tangible feeling of 75,000 people at the same time gasping, um, <laughs> like of the air actually getting sucked out of the arena. Um, <laughs> it was the strangest thing. And and then, like, they start showing all the crowd reactions, you know, and uh, 
uh, <laughs> Warriors agent and I were just kind of like chuckling at the the reactions on people's faces, right? And then I turn over to nudge my wife and I see that she's one of them. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> she, she, she was like somewhere between like utterly stupid stupefied and 100% rage, you know, <laughs> I, I, it was I, so strange. I can empathize with her. I cried. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a little heartbreaking, but it, it seemed at least at home that like the arena was so quiet for a second. You could have heard a pin drop in that place. Oh, totally. It was totally like that. And, and I think it, it really speaks to the strength of the Divas division that they were put on in the match after that. I felt and so bad for them. By the, you know, like it started off with just everyone booing. They weren't booing them, right? They were booing what happened. Right. And by the end of the match, everybody's cheering and into what's happening. So I think that really speaks to, to the power of those women. Absolutely. The, the fact that they were able to get some of the crowd back and get it going again. And because, you know, they were all standing backstage and it's like, Oh no! Yeah, because they didn't know, and <laughs> all of a sudden they're like, "Okay, well, here's your certain time," and then all of a sudden, like, they're all like, "Wait, did that just happen?" Like, "Oh God, we have to follow that." <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> but you mentioned doing Warrior's jacket. Was it? Was it an eerie feeling for you when you found out he had passed? Because that was the last moment that really any of us saw him was on Monday Night Raw in that jacket. You had just seen him. Was that kind of a weird, eerie feeling for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually didn't stay in New Orleans on, on that Monday. We had to drive back. And um, but like I had you know, told my family, like, you know, okay, I need you to, to you know, text me uh, – screen captures right away once you see what he's wearing and and uh my wife was driving and and then all of a sudden like my my text messages start blowing up my twitter blows up uh you know everyone's like oh my god that's you know that's a rob chamberger painting and uh um so we didn't get to watch it live unfortunately uh but by the time we got back home to kansas city it was about 1 30 in the morning we went ahead and fast forwarded to the moment and uh, both of us had our ugly cry over just how uh, emotional the, the whole week had been. And, you know, finally, you know, like there it was, you know, like my art in the middle of the rain wrapped around Warrior in his dramatic comeback and, and everything that he was saying. And so Tuesday night, we were um, finally watching the show. And the next segment to come up was you know, warrior. Uh, and, uh, I got a text from one of my friends in WWE just saying warrior died. And, and I just, uh, I, I couldn't comprehend what I was reading. Right. Those two mm-hmm. words. And, uh, I, I'm like, is this like carny talk that, that I'm unfamiliar with, you know, like wrestler <laughs> lingo or something. And, and I just, like my wife could see that there was something wrong with me. Cause I, I couldn't, I couldn't say it, you know, I couldn't make it real. And I was, you know, just search real quick online and, and saw triple H's statement and WWE statement about it. And, uh, you know, then I had to, to tell her and we just sat there in silence for probably an hour. And, uh, uh finally, you know, like, we were just like, okay, we're going to bed, you know, like can't, <laughs> can't, can't deal with this. And yeah, you know, um, like I said, Warriors agent I'm friendly with, and his father had passed away just a few weeks before. Uh, so like I immediately, you know, sent a note to him, uh, letting him know that, that he was in my thoughts. And then also, you know, everything with, with Dana and the girls, um, you know, like for so many people, like, you know, their, their hero was back and then their hero passed away. But to them, it's, you know, their, their husband and father. Um, but, you know, I've, I've corresponded with, with them a little bit. And, and also with, uh, uh, Warrior's agent, I had promised him to do a painting of Warrior in the jacket as a thank you gift for, for putting all that together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I used some of the same paint that I had used on the jacket in that painting. Uh, and, and, uh, that, that, that helped me, you know, like that was a hard painting to do, 
but by the time I was done with it, I was uh, uh, very happy I'd done it and done it uh, for that person. Sorry to bring the show down. <laughs> no, no, you're totally fine. You know, it's it sounds like it was really cathartic for you because you know to help you get through that moment. Uh, you know, as a artist myself, I can completely relate to that. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's it's the just the small things that help you get through something, and you can put yourself into a piece like that, and you know, have the memory there and and share it with someone else, and that's always important. Right. So. I understand that you're again going to WrestleMania this year. Yes. So what's... Uh, <laughs> I'm very good with these one-word answers, aren't I? Yes. Great for interviews. <laughs> fine. It's totally fine. Editing magic. <laughs> yeah, I'll be uh, painting there again. Um, and, and it's pretty cool doing a, a big portrait of Macho Man. And WWE has provided ring canvas uh, that we stretched out and, and I'll be painting on that to do the portrait. Oh, wow. And is that for them as well? Or is that going to be auctioned off or? Uh, it, that's not certain yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they have first dib, uh, you know, if, if, uh, some executive walks by and decides that they need that in their office or that the company just needs to have that, then you know, we'll do that. Other, otherwise it would probably go up on the auction site. Or, you know, it could just end up in the trunk of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I love your auction page on WWE auctions. It's it's somewhat painful because I see all these beautiful pieces of art and signed pieces of art, and I want them, and I don't have the money for them, and it's very sad. But it's awesome that you have a page on there. I think yeah, I, I think that's so surreal. I've got one there and one on shop too. You know, like I've got my own category uh, on WWE shop. It's, uh, I, I still haven't quite wrapped my mind around it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say there's a big difference between last year and this year, as you said. Yes, uh, and also I've got the the weekly YouTube show with them. Um, so yeah, we we don't quite know what to expect <laughs> this year. Uh, I, I've definitely got a bigger presence, and we're gonna have a, a ton of prints and and paintings that are just like the ones you see on auction. They're frame ready. They're already matted and, and signed by the superstars and divas uh but uh yeah we're <laughs> don't know if i'll have time to, to actually uh paint or i'm gonna be busy talking to people but that's a good problem to have <laughs> that's a very good problem to have so you know obviously there's a big difference between last year and this year as far as gearing up for it and not really knowing what you're going to do because last year you were you were going down to paint and you were painting live and this year you're not entirely sure what you're going to do so is there you know if you're talking to people or is I should say, is there anybody or anything that you want to do while you're there? Well, I'm I'm committed to be uh, in my, my area <laughs> at access um, from open to close each day. Uh, it's crazy, like 12 to 15 hours <laughs> each day that I'm committed to be there. And that's just for, you know, like, while we're going, there will still be like set up and tear down each day. Um, I... I it's going to be a smaller painting than it was last year. Like last year's was seven foot by five foot. This one will be about half that size, um, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, because again, uh, you know, like also like I'm sure people will want their print signed or something. And I want to be able to do that. So there'll be a lot of interruptions, but the, the main plan is to be painting. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And do you know where you're going to be in terms of the access space or have they not told you that yet? Yes. Uh, I will be set up right outside of the superstore. Um, so people don't even need a ticket to access to, to come see what I'm doing, which is nice. Uh, cause you also don't need one for the store. So like, say you're in the area, you're there for WrestleMania, but you know, access for whatever reason isn't your thing or in your budget, but you still want, you know, some awesome art or, or to hang out with a cool guy like me. Uh, you don't even need a ticket. <laughs> All right. My friend Rachel's going, so I'm going to send her to come find you. So oh, she, she, she she can see what you're, you're doing. But I follow you on social media and, you know, I see your videos and you see your paintings. And, and I have to know about the challenge that you set for yourself, which is the 82 pieces that you, that you completed, by the way. Congratulations. Thanks. Before WrestleMania, <laughs> you did them in 70 days, which is incredible. 
are we going to get to see any of those at WrestleMania, or what what are your plans for those? Yeah, uh, all these were for WrestleMania. Um, 30 of them, well, 29, uh, had already done WrestleMania 30, but 29 of them were the WrestleMania series paintings that I did, uh, where, where I've painted each WrestleMania. Uh, so that's about half of it, um, or a third, however the math works. And, uh, um, it depends on uh, which math you use. Uh, but, but also, uh, also those paintings that we're going to have there, uh, you know, I had to get those done because I'll be backstage at Raw and SmackDown next week, uh, you know, getting them signed. So I needed to have them all ready, uh, by then. Uh, so that's why I had like that, that amount of paintings to get done. It's, you know, pretty much the whole roster plus each WrestleMania. And, what was your thought process behind doing all of that? I mean, just was it, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 82 paintings in 72 days, or was it a, a way to kind of challenge yourself to get yourself out of a rut? Or uh, it, it was strictly um, the the way that my deal is set up with WWE is uh, I essentially do what I want to do, and then we sell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so they give they gave me that great opportunity. So something like WrestleMania, where they're giving me my own space, uh, where, you know, like I'm even going to have my own merchants there to to sell the prints and stuff. It's an amazing opportunity. So I wanted to do everything humanly possible to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, So that's what it was. Um, You know, I want to show to them and and to all the fans as well that uh, the goodwill that they've been showing me is, is worth it. Um, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so what's for you, what's the biggest challenge when you come up with the pieces for the talent? Is it, and is it kind of nerve wracking when you show it to them? Cause you're not sure if they're going to like it or not. I've had like, I haven't had anyone tell me that they, they don't like them. I don't know if they're just polite or, or what, but, uh, um, uh, it's not so much that as just trying in my mind to do the best piece possible that, represents what their persona is all about and, and still have it look cool <laughs> so that people would want it to. Um, uh, that's mostly it. Uh, and then also, yeah, most, mostly when, when I'm dealing with them, it's, we're, we're essentially coworkers. Um, so, so I'm, you know, it, it, it's like when you're at the office, you want to make sure that your coworkers see that you're doing a good job. Right. Uh, so, but that's kind of how it is with dealing with them too. So do you have a, a favorite person to paint? Is there somebody that gets like super excited whenever they see something from you? Several people have been cool. Um, the ones that are the most correct answer for that, I can't say because it would hurt their <laughs> gimmick. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, really, uh, well, one that really surprised me um was uh, Randy Orton. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's Randy, right? Um, right. And uh, I, you know, we're both Missouri kids. He's St. Louis. I'm Missouri, uh, Kansas city. Um, so, and, and we're, we're only like three months difference in, in, in age. I think. I think he's like exactly three months older than me. So I always kind of saw everything that he was doing as inspiration to myself to push, you know, but, but when I'm back there, I don't want to come off as, you know, a geeky fan or anything, right? You know, I want to show right. that I belong there. Um, so, at, and, at, and at first, you know, Randy was a little gruff uh, the first time I met him, but it was just because of the, the day that he was having, you know, not, not anything directed towards me. And uh, by the end of the conversation, you know, he was totally into what I was doing. He's shared the paintings, uh, which was great. And uh, uh, now, like, whenever I see him, you know, like, at a show, uh, he'll be walking along, talking to people, kind of ignoring people that are yelling at him to, to help with something. And they'll be like, Oh, Hey Rob, I'll be over soon, you know, to, to sign whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's, he's a, he's a cool guy. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now I want to talk to you about this year's WrestleMania and what they've kind of got going on. But before, before we get to that, I want to talk to you about SummerSlam because you you had another unique experience at this year's SummerSlam in L.A. where you got to paint Stone Cold Steve Austin live 
and then present it to him. Was that was that a little nerve wracking? Because <laughs> he, he yeah, because uh, beforehand he told me that if I did a bad job, I was going to get a stunner. Oh, no. Uh, so <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> so that, right, and, and uh, then I was kind of like, "Well, do I do a bad painting just so I can say I got a stunner?" Um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that was neat because it was on that that Sunday of uh, SummerSlam. And which happened to also be my wife's birthday and she was along with me. So when we went up there to, you know, so that he could see it and we could get our, you know, picture taken together, I just, you know, kind of dropped like, oh, hey, it's my wife's birthday. So, you know, she got a, a in person happy birthday from, from Stone Cold. So uh, that was a good uh, husband of the year moment, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Steve's been a really great supporter pretty much since when I started. Um, and we correspond every now and then, uh, through, you know, like private messages and things, uh, very nice guy. And also cause I'm, I'm friendly with, uh, Jim Ross as well. So I think, you know, Jim is in his ear quite a bit about me. Um, but yeah, that, that was really neat. And then also the painting, uh, afterwards we, uh, auctioned off, at, uh, to, to go to the Connors Cure, uh, charity. Uh, which is one that's very important to me. Uh, and I think we raised somewhere around like $4,500 uh, with that painting, with all the proceeds going to the charity. Uh, so what, that really that, made it all worthwhile. Absolutely. And what was it like for you last? Did you happen to see Raw last night where they made the announcement regarding Connor being given the inductory warrior award for the hall of fame? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, my wife was just, she just utterly lost it. I mean, she was just falling like crazy while we were watching that. Um, and, and, uh, I talked with Steve Connor's father, uh, occasionally really, really nice man. And, uh, it, it's really special to, to see how the, you know, everything around WWE, all the fans, everyone are keeping Connor's memory alive. And that now it's, uh, that memory is being used to, to help out so many other people. Uh, I did a painting uh, of uh, when when Connor uh, you know, pinned Triple H and was doing the yes chant above him with, with Daniel Bryan. I uh, did a, a painting of that and, and gave it to Steve, and he, he's got it up in his living room now. Uh, that one, that one was really really emotional. I mean, doing the painting alone was tough, but then uh, when I talked to Steve. He uh, said that he hadn't been able to look at any pictures or footage of his son from that time because Connor was very, very sick. Right. And all that he could see was was how uh, sick his son was and, and that he was going to be gone very shortly. Uh, and he said that the painting was the first time he was able to to look at that and really have those emotions about you know, how special that moment was for Connor. Um, yeah, that, that was, that was one of those things that reminded me why I do what I do. Uh, I would agree. That's, you know, like last night, that's, that's right, right to the heart. I know I got a little misty eyed. I think every day, everybody did cause it's definitely well-deserved and he seemed like he was such a, a really special spirit. Yeah. Very, very sweet. Yeah. That was a, that was a tough one to do, but I'm very <laughs> glad I did it. <laughs> Again, it's it's the hard ones that sometimes are are the most special, you know. Yes, yeah, I definitely agree. So another kind of, I guess, tough one because you're doing the painting of Macho Man would be to actually see Macho Man going into the Hall of Fame. What's your reaction to that? Uh, I'm very excited, uh, very very excited for all of the, the Macho Man fans and uh, uh, you know getting to see that happen. I. I actually didn't get into wrestling until I was 18, which would have been around 98, 99. Uh, so I didn't grow up on it like most people did and have, you know, the memories, especially of like the eighties, early nineties wrestling, um, to where, uh, you know, like Macho Man has a very, very special place in a lot of people's fans, uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of people's hearts. Uh, not saying that I don't, but, uh, I don't have it like, in me, like I do for say, uh, Transformers or GI Joe or something, right? right? Uh, uh, the the so many other kids from that time period did. Uh, so I'm, knowing 
you know, I can just kind of em- empathize for, for the emotions that they're having finally seeing this happen. And I, I'm very excited for that. And uh, I've talked with with uh, Lanny uh, here and there. Uh, he he likes the, the paintings that I've done quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, it would be nice to, to do this piece. That, that, that'll be pretty cool, especially if Lenny can come by and see you working on it or you would get to present it to him at, at the end. That would be, I think, very, very awesome. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so we know that you keep up to the up to date on the product and you tweet a lot during the pay-per-views and especially during raw and everything. And I'd like to know who some, who are some of your favorites to watch these days? <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, it's very different when you know, these performers as people, uh, right. not just as the, the character that they portray on, on TV. Um, and seeing how hard uh, so many of them work. I, it's a cop-out answer, but I, I just get really excited around WrestleMania season. Uh, everyone really steps up what they're doing. You know, the, the stories are all into to high gear. Um, and, and it's really cool, too. You know, like the, the crowds start getting a lot more energetic. And then especially WrestleMania week, you know, just how hot everything is. It's uh, the, the time of year where all of these uh, performers get to see, you know, just how big and, and important what they're doing is. So I get excited for them that they get to go through that. Uh, that aside, um, I'm uh, really fascinated by how they're doing the build up to Bray Wyatt versus the undertaker. Um, yes, of course I would like to see undertaker, you know, more often. Uh, but I think that it'll really make when he does finally step out, at WrestleMania 31, just that much more impactful uh, so you, if they do hold them off TV until then. You just have to promise me because I'm I'm jazz, jazzed up for this one as well that you do the, a painting of the stare down between the two when that moment finally it's comes. Why don't you say that? And with what I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, the, uh, 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 Monday following WrestleMania, um, you know, I've got my, my weekly videos on YouTube and I'm working on a piece that is, uh, like all the big matchups from WrestleMania and it'll, uh, go up that day, which should have both of those guys in it. <laughs> so I have to stalk your social media that day. Got it. Right. <laughs> uh, also, uh, uh, I'm really excited for Rusev and Lana, um, two really great people. Uh, you know, sorry to, to <laughs> uh, ruin any kind of gimmick. They're, they're really great people, and uh, seeing how far both of them have come in just one year is awesome. Um, you know, he, he and he hasn't even, I think, really hit his full potential yet. Uh, I think that there's. Uh, a lot of mileage to get out of him and that character. And, uh, it's great to see that, you know, here he is now, you know, in a, a major matchup with, with John Cena. I think that'll really continue to, to elevate his spot. And w- what are your thoughts on John Cena's actions last night? Well, I might be, uh, seeing things a little different. Um, okay. Like the, the latest Superman movie, mm-hmm. Man of Steel, uh, I didn't particularly care for because of the way that they depicted Superman. I have a certain way that I want to see Superman, which is being, you know, Superman, not smacking people's necks and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, you know, uh, I, I do think it's interesting that they're evolving the character uh, of John Cena and taking it in a different place. I just maybe personally don't um, like the way that some of it is done, but also I don't know where it's all going. Right. Uh, so that, that could be uh, interesting to see how it all pays off. It could be, it definitely could be. Now I have one last question for you and I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Is Roman Reigns the next WWE champion? Boy, um, there's no one more credible for him to lose to (laughs) than Brock (laughs) Lesnar. Um, uh, but I think that, uh, like, here's another thing that people don't really think about and they haven't really talked about on TV. Now, uh, Roman Reigns is undefeated at WrestleMania. 
Mm-hmm. So it could be, the, and, and this is his first singles match at a WrestleMania. So it could be the beginning of a, a new streak, defeating the person that ended the streak. Um, you know, that, that's that's a good, compelling story. Plus, uh, I, I think it's been fascinating to watch his rise as well, and uh, the things that he's had to fight. You know, both like storyline wise and in real life. Uh, with uh, some of the fan reaction uh, to him. But also I think in the last month to two months, he's really uh, stepped up and, uh, you know, like gotten a lot better on the mic. Um, You know, like there's the old saying, uh, especially Stone Cold always said, was that his character was just himself with the volume turned up. Yeah. Uh, Same thing with The Rock. Uh, I think that we're very close to seeing that with Roman Reigns. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they, they've just about got it there. And I think that, that could be really exciting. And uh, I, I would have no problem with him, him being champion at all. Good to know. Sorry, Rob. Well, <laughs> I want to say thank you so much. And if you don't mind, can you tell our listeners where they can, they can find you and find your work and sort of check you out if they've never seen your stuff? Sure. Uh, I'm the most active on Twitter. It's at Rob Schamberger, R-O-B-S-C-H-A-M-B-E-R-G-E-R. Also on Instagram, same thing. Uh, got a Facebook page, which, you know, it's Facebook. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, every Monday, got the videos on WWE's YouTube channel called Canvas to Canvas. Uh, you can watch me do a whole painting in two minutes, uh, plus, you know, see my latest artwork as well. And, uh, let's see. Also, WWE Shop, uh, got a whole section there with prints and posters, plus WWE Auction. We have signed prints and original paintings, uh, available there. And my website, if you want to see the thousand plus wrestling paintings I've done, that's robshamburger.com. And I hope anyone that's in San Jose for WrestleMania Week, hope to see you at Access. Yeah. Go stop by, say hi, watch him work because it's amazing. Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. We're greatly appreciative. Thanks a lot for having me back on. No problem. And good luck this year. Thanks. Can't wait to see what you do. (laughs) (laughs) No, you'll be you'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Rob, thank you so much. Thank you guys.